<laughs> well, good morning. I called the meeting to order right at 10 o'clock. I'd like to welcome you to our annual holiday luncheon, but without the luncheon, unless you brought stuff that looks fabulous, and I'll show it to you later. Um, but let's see all those, those costumes, those holiday costumes. We've been kind of looking around. I guess I can't see everybody. I can see a lot of hats, a lot of really cute costumes. So welcome. We have a busy meeting for you today and we anticipate that will last <laughs> at least an hour. But at the end, we will allow you to stay online and visit with other members of the guild for about 15 or 20 minutes or until you're tired of seeing everybody. Um, but it's so nice to see and connect with you all. We're planning to do our election of officers, um, be, hopefully before the end of the month. We were gonna do it today, but we have a couple of openings and we'd really like to have one vote instead of multiple votes. So we'll be sending you a voting tool and we'll let you know ahead of time. And we'll do it like we approved the budget a couple weeks ago. Please consider volunteering for volunteering for one of these positions because they're really enjoyable. Um, we have been fortunate as our board and committee chairs have been volunteered to stay in place for 2021, as it would be difficult to find volunteers for all of the positions. But we do need program chair and program chair elect. Bonnie would like to have some help this year with the programs that she's already scheduled. And program chair elect is a great position because you get to go online and you get to do a meet the teachers. And there, is, there are wonderful websites where you can see teachers from all over the world and it helps that they speak English. But um, anyway, we can get some really great personalities to come and we don't have to pay for their travel. We don't have to pay for their lodging, food. We just have to pay for their presentations and workshops if they have online workshops with Zoom. So it's a fun, fun thing. I've done it before. Um, and all the programs for 2021 have already been planned and the speakers are in contact with our guild, but we need someone who can contact each of the speakers to make certain that they do their presentations using Zoom and see if they're willing to do the workshops on Zoom as well. The program chair elect needs to find speakers for the year 2022. There are lots of wonderful speakers and presenters out there. So it'll be easy to get in touch with them. You have a whole year to get in touch with them to schedule for 2022. So I see Elena raising her hand there. <laughs> She's going, no. <laughs> anyway, please, please, please um, send me a text or call me after the meeting and let me know if you are interested in either one of those two positions. Really appreciate it. Uh, remember that we do record our business meetings and this is one of them. So it will be posted on the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild.org website um, a day or two after this meeting is concluded. We do not post board meetings or speaker presentations because that's their business. We also post our meeting minutes for business meetings on the srqg.org website and invite you to review them if you are inclined. So if you missed this meeting, you can review it uh, tomorrow the next day, whenever it gets up, Sharon Fry would let you know as soon as it's posted on the internet. So let's check out some of our committee reports. Block of the month, Carol Lemoyne and Joni Bellinghausen have been collecting your blocks for the bomb drawings. Drum roll, please. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas to everybody. We really miss you. I'm Joni Bellinghausen, and this is Carol Lemonnier, and we are presenting the winners of the soap of the block of the month. Sorry, I forgot what we were doing here. Yes, we're doing uh, the block of the month for the month from March all the way to November. We did not have a December block of the month because how can you make it and then mail it to me? 
So we've got nine to do. We are going to show you uh, the blocks. I will um, call out the names of all those who have participated. Hopefully I have received all of the blocks that you have mailed, except for Helen Smith. And she has promised that she will mail it to the winners. Um, um, and um, let's go. So because this is our first block that we're showing, uh, this block is for June. We called it the June geese because these blocks are the geese. I made 16 of them. J Jim Jensen made two. Janet Tonkin made five. Diana Cotting made two. Carla Twitchell made one. Sharon Fry made one. And Nikki Pinch made four. And so, we are going to call out, um, we are going to select two winners. The first winner is Jim Jensen. The second winner is Nikki Hinch. Congratulations. And now we're going to take these blocks off and we will put on the next one. All right. Congratulations, Jim and Nikki. Let's see who wins the March blog of the month. We called it Green Irish Isle. And the people that participated was myself, Jim, Janet, Diane Potty. Thank you, Diane. And thank you, Carla Twitchell. Both of you and Sharon Fry, I think you did, all three of you did one each month. Good for you guys. Carolyn Miggs. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, Car Carolyn Meggs, Betty Upchurch, Sharon Fry, Joni B, Cheryl Dudley, and Brenda Crobin. And so, the winner for March, and we'll have we'll have two winners. First one, Sharon Fry. Second one. Jim, again! Whoa. All right, what a winner, okay. <laughs> All right, now we're on to April, still in the pandemic, still uh, thinking that this is gonna be over real soon because we've already done a month. Uh -huh. Little did we know. Um, we have at least 25 tulips here. They're small little blocks that we have. We called it the crazy tulip block. Um, I made a few with um, a cover for it um, to frame it. Uh, and that way you can see what it looks like if you frame it. That's what you want to do, but that's your, um, your choice. Um, and um, uh, let's see what else. Oh, yes. Helen Smith also contributed to this block. So Helen Smith, uh, if you win it, Keep that block that you have, and if you didn't, pay attention to who the winner is. And so we will now have the drawing for April. Oh, I forgot to tell you, the participants was Helen, Cheryl, Nikki, Sharon, Joni, Carla, Diane, Janet, Jim, and myself. And so we're going to have two winners. You're going to receive... No. You're going to receive at least around 12 blocks. The first winner is Carol Lamonier. I know her. <laughs> and the second winner is Carol Lamonier. She doesn't get to win twice. <laughs> the third winner is Helen Smith. Perfect, Helen. So just mail one. No, keep two of your blocks and that'll be it. Square and square. All right. So, just for your information, um, we are taking this in my garage, my three-car garage, so it's pretty big. We're wearing our mask when we're not on camera uh, as we uh, put on the blocks here. And we're trying to keep as safe as possible, but also uh, loud enough for you to hear. So, congratulations, uh, Helen. 
<laughs> this makes it so much easier. And now we're going to go to the next block, which is May. Do you remember that one? See you in a bit. So here we have May's baskets. Um, and I wanted you to really see what Diane did in her basket. Let me take it off the design wall. She even appliqued some beautiful flowers and added a little leaf on the bottom of her basket. Isn't that cute? That's going beyond the call of duty. So our participants for the May baskets were Cheryl Dudley, all the way from Virginia, uh, Nikki, Joni, Carolyn, Sharon Fry, Lolly Yan, Carla Twitchell, Diana Cotty, Janet Tonkin, Jim, and myself. We should have 22 baskets here. So the winner is Carol Lamonge for one. And Diane Cotty! Fantastic! Okay. Um, that's it for May, but before you, uh, go ahead, do it, uh, before you, you, before we, we end this May basket, I wanted to say that in addition to the people that I have uh, enumerated as participants of the Block of the Month, I also had Marlene Sullivan donate 11 different blocks, but she's so busy with so many UFOs that she said, here are the blocks. Don't put my name in the drawing because I don't need another project. So thank you, Marlene, for, for participating and giving us a better chance to win. Uh, hopefully during this pandemic, you're catching up on all of your projects. Thank you. Here we are, back with our July block of the month. We called it uh summer pinwheel patriotic summer pinwheel uh, i don't know what this looks like on zoom but i can tell you up up close they're gorgeous they're absolutely stunning very very pretty so the participants for the july uh block of the month was cheryl dudley nikki hinch helen smith joni b Sharon Fry, Francis Evans, Carla Twitchell, Diana, Janet Tompkin, Jim, and myself. The first winner is Sharon Fry. Congratulations. And the second winner is Nikki Hinch. Hey, we have, we have repeating winners. Woohoo! Okay, see you next month. All right, here we go. All right. Welcome to August and the fluttering butterflies. And I know you've seen this because if you got the instructions, you saw the one that Jim Jensen made, but you really got to look at it. I hope you all win this one. Of course, that's impossible. But his butterfly wings are actual feathers. Actually, it's K-facet fabric. And it just looks so cool. Now we have our butterflies display going up, going down, going sideways. Of course, you are the creator of your quilt. You can do whatever you want, but besides, we would give you a chance to see what you can do. And the winners of the August, let me tell you who the participants were. Cheryl Dudley, Nikki, Carolyn, Sharon Fry, Francis Evans, Kay Hartman, Carla Twitchell, Diana, Cotting, Janet, Jim, and myself. And the first winner is Nikki Hitch. Bang girl, you're lucky. And the second winner is Janet Tonkin. Congratulations. On to August, September. Okay. Okay, here we are, September. Ah, uh, it's hot. It's harvest time. And we need to can our vegetables and our fruit. And then obviously some people don't understand the concept behind canning. We even have uh, ships, ships in a bottle. <laughs> but, you know, 
And uh, we have flowers, and we even have some supplies in a can, which I guess that's possible, plausible. So the participants in the September block of the month was Cheryl Dudley, Sharon Fry, Kay Hartman, Nikki, Francis Evans, Carla Twitchell, Diane Cotting, Janet, and myself. There were 26 blocks. The first winner is Janet Tonkin. Very good, congratulations. And the second winner is Kay Hartman. See you next month. All right, here we go. So, this is not so long ago. We're talking October, and we've got this pumpkin spice block of the month. We have 29 right behind me. There are some really, really cute ones. Um, they're all cute. Um, now, you may ask yourself, this is a plug for the block of the month for next year. You may ask yourself, why should I participate in the block of the month just to make a quilt with a whole bunch of pumpkins. No husband's gonna to wanna to sleep under a bunch of pumpkins. Or maybe he is, I don't know. He's not gonna go. <laughs> but you don't have to make a quilt, you know that. You can make pot holders, you can make so the beginning of a sewer row, and then it's a harvest quilt, mm -hmm. table runners. There's a lot of things that you can do with these very, very cute blocks. So uh, participate next year. And uh, you will be very, very happy if you win. So now forget about that plug and let's move on with the drawing. We have um, Brenda Corbin, uh, Cheryl Dudley, Sharon Fry, Kay Hartman, Laura Barrett, Nikki Hinch, Francis Evans, Carla, Diana, Diana, Janet Tonkin, Jim and myself who participated in this. And the winners are um, Laura Barrett, a new winner, and Francis Evans, another new winner. Congratulations. And good. Francis Evans lives close to me, so I will give her that right away. All right. See you next month. All right. Our last block. I hope uh, everyone has won, or at least won one month. Um, we've got turkeys. Your husband doesn't like to sleep under pumpkins. He can sleep under a turkey. Um, so we had uh, 20 turkeys here. We had as our participants, Carla, Nikki, Laura, Diana, Sharon, Janet, Jim, and myself. And the winner of half of them is myself. And Nikki Hinch again. All right. Poor Nikki, you are a winner this, this year. So that's the conclusion of our drawing. Um, I can tell you for next year, we will be uh, doing this again, myself, Joni and I. And uh, we hope that you will participate. And we won't do an end of the year drawing. We plan on doing drawings every three months, every four months. Um, so please participate. Um, let me tell you that it's, it's not a lot of work, but there is some work that is done in doing these. Joni comes up with a brilliant idea. I do it and make all the mistakes and fix my mistakes. I then give the pictures and the instructions to Jim Jensen, who again does it and puts the instructions in a concise um, manner. And then he gives it to our very own Sharon Fry, who, who I call our virgin ears and, and eyes because she doesn't know anything about the pattern. And that way she can do it just based on the instruction and see if the instruction makes sense. And then it goes out to you. So there's a lot of work that is done beforehand. And so I encourage you uh, to do them. I know that it's a pain to have to mail them, uh, but you'll always mail them to me. 
So it's always going to be the same address. And you can certainly give them to the library when we have library days, and I'll be there to fix them up. And then, God willing, maybe, just maybe, sometime in the year 2021, we will be together. So Merry Christmas. Um, thank you very much for participating. And Joni, come here and take a bow. This is the great creator of them all. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Carol and Joni. That was fabulous. And I challenge each of you to do a block every month. I have a really hard time doing them. I don't follow patterns very well, but I'm going to really, um, really, really try to do them. Actually, I will start doing them in 2021. Let's move on to community quilts. I know Anne has a nice video from Community Quilts people, and take it away. Hi, this is Laura Barrett, and I'm with Community Quilts, and I'm here wearing my holiday clothes today, my leggings with reindeer and my uh, pum -pum, -pum, pum pum sweatshirt, just to be festive and uh, enjoy this holiday meeting. Uh, first thing, all of us at Community Quilts would like to thank everyone for all the finished quilts that you've done this year uh, and going the extra mile to get those quilts to us, being creative of giving them to a friend, maybe to another friend to get them to us. We really appreciate that. And all the tops that you provided and that have been turned into finished quilts. Thank you so much, everybody. We have some Valley of the Moon size tops available to be quilted. So I'm going to show you one. Here we go. So this one's all about quilting and sewing. So what we're going to do is take pictures of the quilts we have available and put those pictures, well Linda Cooper's going to do it, put those pictures on the Community Quilts page of the website and you can see what's available. We'll put, have the sizes on there and a little name for them. Then you can call me or email me, Laura Barrett, and we'll get that quilt with some backing and batting. And if you'll quilt that, that will be great. Um, I want to talk about fire quilts a little bit. We're continuing to hand out fire quilts. We still have several finished um, quilts available for anybody who needs one who lost their home in the fire. So if you contact me, Laura Barrett, we'll connect with you and get those quilts to you. Um, if people don't have a place to put them yet, um, you can give me their name and we can put them on a list or you can just wait until they're ready. So I have a nice story about um, a fire survivor. So I don't know how many of you remember Bob Miyashiro. He is a Hawaiian man who made authentic Hawaiian quilts, hand appliqued, hand sewn, hand quilted, and won several awards at the fair. I remember when he won the People's Choice Award and he would come to our luncheon, that would probably be maybe where you met him, and show his quilt at the Founders Day. Well anyway, he lived up St. Helena Road and he lost his home in the fire. Pam McVeigh was able to give me his home number, which he just had restored, and I talked to him and I saw him the other day at his new rental and we were able to give him a quilt. He was a bit overwhelmed um, by the generosity of the guild and that we had thought of him. He said probably four or five times, please tell the guild members, thank you so much for thinking of me. Thank you so much for providing me with a quilt because I lost all my quilts in the fire, he said. So thank you everyone um, from Bob Mirashiro. Um, and lastly, everyone at Community Quilts would like to wish you a happy holiday. So everybody take good care. Bye-bye. 
Thank you, Laura Barrett. Really appreciate that. And just a reminder, you can go to the Community Quilts page on our srqg.org website. So a rose. Linda Hooper put together a slideshow of show and tell items for us. They will be posted on the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild website under the heading of blog, I believe. But Ann, can you show us the slideshow that Linda put together? Okay, and you skipped so a rose, so we'll come back to that afterwards. <gasps> Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Linda Hooper. That was just beautiful. Everybody have thumbs up. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Let's go to Sew a Rose. Ann Nolan took over from Betsy Smith, who moved to Penn Valley. And so Ann has been doing like triple duty of helping out with several different um, projects and committees. But Ann, can you run that video for us, please, for Sew a Rose? Sure, let's pull that up. What is a Sew a Row? The Sew a Row Challenge is a fun and easy way to take part in the making of a quilt by providing one or more rows to the project. Beginning in January, Members start rows or medallions and they are put up for adoption for the next person to put on his or her creative stamp on it. The original colors and design are considered and expanded upon as each row is added to the first. As each person turns in their row, they are asked to include any fabric scraps so they can be incorporated into the rest of the rows. By the end of the year, several members have added love to the rows and a nice quilt top has been created. In December, there is a rolling of the dice to determine which lucky participant gets to take the quilt top home. This year, we will have some really creative rows and medallions on hand to be adopted. Keep checking back to keep an eye on what you might, what might pique your interest. So here you can see is a starter row. And uh, that's the one on the left that someone put in. This is an actual one that was done this year. And then row two, someone added the next row. They stayed with the Keith Bassett fabric and went with a different uh, type of series of blocks. 
And then row number three, once again, it was a fabric um, and it kept with the theme of it. And then it progressed throughout the year. Each quilter usually has a month or two to work on it. And then here's row four for that sew row where they added some more K fabric, once again, sticking with the theme of the back, back, black background. And then the final product, which is row number five. And this will be auctioned off today, which is going to be very fun to see. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Ann Nolan. I'm the chair for the Sew Row Committee, and I'm the drop-off for Santa Rosa. Hi, I'm Margo Pitter, and I'm a little helper for Ann Nolan, and I live in Santa, at Santa Rosa. I live in Healdsburg. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeannie Parent. I live in Cloverdale, and I try to help with the Sew Row. And I, I just wanted to thank both Jeannie and Margo because when the, uh, the shutdown hit, we all kept thinking it was going to end quickly and then it kept going. And the two of them not only prodded me to get the program going, but they kept working on a sew a row that you live here. <laughs> Got a lot of progress going when we weren't even running the program, which is great. And then when we decided to start up, they found out where the Soho Rose had traveled to because people were passing them along. It's kind of cool. So what we've decided since this year is so irregular in every way, we've decided that the Soho Rose that got partially done, like only one, two or three rows, we're gonna roll them over to next year. And Tony Anderson has volunteered to run next year. And um, so she'll take them and do whatever she does next year. We'll start with some to work on there. And then the ones that had four or five, so they're done or close to done, we're going to go ahead and raffle them off today to the winners. And um, we will contact people to see how they'd like to get them. So you can uh, pick them up from any of our drop-off places, the three of us. So the ones that are rolling over to next year, and you can see pictures of them on um, the website. And uh, it is number one, which is ladies in pink. Uh, number two, It's a Dog's Life. Number four, Sewing Room Sue. Number five, Kittens. Number six, Peking Girls. Number 13, Raspberry Sherbert. Number 14, Sunshine and Stars. And number 19, Birds in a Basket. And the last one, number 20, Be Happy. And some of these came in late because of the shutdown and everything, so they didn't have much time to get going. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to drawing and see who won um, the Soho Rose. So I'll get the first one. Um, we're amateurs at this, so we apologize ahead of time if we give up. Okay, so here is number three which is called Sunshine, and Margo's going to say who worked on them. Okay, the starter for this was Nadine Heppel. The second one was Lolly Gan Gannon. The third one was Chris Nolan. The fourth one was Alana Colburn. And the last one was Shelley Bowers. And Jeannie's going to roll the dice. Okay. Number four, Alana Colburn. Congratulations, Alana. Congratulations, Elena. <laughs> I have a feeling that she's going to win a lot because she was. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is number seven called Ice Cream Cones. Oh, that's oh, cute. So cute. I love that. Okay, and the starter for this one is Marianne Hare. The second one is Janelle Voorhees. The third one is Frances Evans. Uh, the fourth one is Alana Colburn. And the, the fifth one is Joni Billenhausen. 
And the winner is number five. Joni Billenhausen. Congratulations, Joni. Congratulations, Joni. There might, there might be a fight over that one once they figure out where it lives. Okay, so the next one is number eight, which is Farm Girl. And this is the one that the two rebels that are in the meeting here right now <laughs> get on. And there's a book from the library that's <laughs> awesome. Yes, and this one was started by Jan Westerman. And the second one to work on it was Jan Andrews. The third one to work on it was Jeannie Parent. The fourth one to work on it was Margot Pitter. And the fifth one to work on it was Margot Pitter. And the winner is uh, number five. Number five? Yes. Margot Pitter. Congratulations, <laughs> Margot. <laughs> the starter for this uh, quote number nine is Sharon Oman. Number two is Francis Evans. And number three is Francis Evans. Number four is Alana Colburn. And number five is Sharon Oman. And uh, the winner is number four. Number four is Alana Colburn. Congratulations, Congratulations, Alana. Okay, this one is real easy. You'll have to look on the website to see it. This is number 10. And this is one that uh, the starter was anonymous. And then Maureen Porter got it just before the shutdown. And she just kept going and did all the roads. So she already has it. And she knows she's oh. in it. There's no competition, so number number ten went to. Um, <laughs> to Way to go, Maureen! <laughs> Way to go! Like I said, strange times. So <laughs> number eleven is let's see, this called soaring. And Margo, if you could tell us who. Wow. Okay, the starter was K. Hartman. Number two is Jan Westerman. Number three is Jan Westerman. And number four is Kay Hartman. And number five is Chris Nolan. Okay, here we go. Number one. Kay Hartman. Yay, Kay. Yay, Kay. Yay, Kay. Yay, Kay. Woo, woo. My paper fell down. This is getting wilder and wilder. This is number 12. It's called House of Blues. It got really big, but it's fascinating. So let me show it here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's houses. And wow. And we have trees on the side, which turned out just great. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, and the starter for this was Elizabeth Mars. Number two is Janet Tonkin. Number three is Alana Colburn. Number four is Laura Ludo, I think it is. Oh, Biundo, I think she says it. I'm not sure. Okay. Sorry, Laura. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the fifth one is Carol Lemonier. Okay, and the winner is number two. Number two is Janet Tonkin. Woo! Way to go, winner. Janet Tonkin! Winner, winner. Okay, our next one is called it's number 15, Garden Path. And all mm. is what it looks like. It's very oh. cool. Okay, and this one was started by Leslie Cruz. Number two is Alana Colburn. Number three is Carol Lemonier. Number four is Kay Hartman. And number five is Chris Nolan. Okay, and the winner is number five. 
Chris Nolan. Oh, congratulations, Chris. And Way to go, Chris. The next one, the next uh, soul row is number 16, Blue Skies and Sunshine. And I'll show you here, and Margo will tell you who worked on it. Okay, the starter was Leslie Cruz. Number two is Sharon Orman, Omen. And number three is Alana Colburn. Number four is Caroline Pope. And number five is Frances Evans. Okay, and the winner is number two. Number two is Sharon Omen. Congratulations, Congratulations Sharon. Sharon's going to have a lot of projects to do really soon. I know. Okay, let me get the next one. Stacked up here. The next one is number 17, which is called Stuck in a Box. And this one, the colors make me melt, I'll tell you. That was really interesting. Yeah, this one is pretty. Really turned out lush with colors. Yeah. Beautiful. So the starter for this one was Janelle Voorhees. Number two is Chris Nolan. Number three is Tony Anderson. Number four is Carolyn Miggs. And number five is Carol Lemonier. And the winner is number one. Number one, Janelle Voorhees. Congratulations, Congratulations Janelle. Janelle. Thank you. Okay. We got, I think, just two more left. This one is 18, which is called Cave safe. It's wow. Cave. And Water this one was, wow. This one was started by Alana Colburn. Number two is Chris Nolan. Number three is Caroline Pope. Number four is Sharon Oman. And number five is Margot Pitter. Okay. And the winner is, the winner is number four. Which one? Number four. Number four, that's Sharon Oman. Congratulations yes. again, Sharon. Yes. And this is the very last one. It's number 21. I'm cutting my head off again. It's a family tradition. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Curvy Cave. There's just four rows finished on this, but close enough, we're going to go ahead and raffle it off. Okay, so the starter for this one is Ann Nolan. This, number two is Alana Colburn. Number three is Caroline Pope. And number four is Candy Delgado. And the winner is number four. Candy Delgado. Congratulations, Candy. Congratulations, Candy. Okay, that's it for the Soul Rose. And Thank you so much for everyone who participated and got here to get them. And that's it. Bye. Good job. Bye. Congratulations, Bye. everybody. Bye. Thank you very much, Marco, Jeannie, and Anne. And thank you for Tony Anderson for taking this on next year. It's been amazing when you think we were shut down and these things were still surviving. I'm just really pleased and it's only because Margot, Jeannie, and Anne kept it going. Um, so let's move on. We have two studio tours for you today. Are you ready to see them? And do your thing. Okay, here we go. Good morning, Tony Anderson here. Hey, we finally moved into our rebuilt house, which means I have a new quilt room and I wanted to share it with you guys this morning. Thanks for joining me and here we go. So starting from the left and going around the room clockwise as you come through the quilt room door, here are three pretty little quilt photos that I cut out from one of my old quilt books to frame and hang on the wall to set the tone for the room. Here I use uh, this space just against the wall for my cutting tools. 
And here is my sewing station uh, with my sewing machine. As you can see, it's an L-shaped table, which is really useful when I want to use it for quilting. I can put the sewing machine on this side and use this side to support the weight of the quilt while I'm quilting. Here I keep all my fabrics. And as you can see, I try to keep all my pack quarters organized um, by color so that they can be easily found. I use large jars to collect the smaller pieces. And I've tried to collect over the time that I was waiting to decorate this room, just some various art supplies that were colorful and could be used as both useful tools and decorations as well. I try to keep the room filled with things that I really love. I wanted to share with you, one of my daughters does art rocks and she made this art rock for me. Um, it's one of the quilts that I lost in the fire. Here's another one of those. This actually is one that I made for her uh, that was lost in the fire, unfortunately. I had brought it back here to uh, put it in one of the quilt shows and it didn't make it. <laughs> so I thought it was sweet that she made that for me in memory. And here is one that she made as a memento for the sisters quilt show that we went to a couple of years ago. Here are a series of books that my other daughter has written, and I just kind of keep it here to, cheer, to be a cheerful presence in the middle of all of my other fun, colorful things. Yardage in the corner, had to have a TV. <laughs> it's in the background, but sometimes I do get some use out of it. Here we have my work table. This is just a, a workbench that I got from Home Depot. It's a three position workbench. I covered it with a couple of melamine pieces so that it extends the table and gives me more room to work on. Um, it holds my cutting mat and gives me plenty of room to work on or cut my quilts. This is in its upright position, which is uh, 35 inches, which is perfect for standing up and working on things. And it also uh, positions down to 30 inches, which is the same height as my sewing table. So I can back it up to that sewing table and have extra room for quilting if I need it. Here is my uh, design wall that I made. I uh, took some insulation from Home Depot and covered it with flannel. And it's just a really nice size. It's not too big. Uh, I normally don't make uh, bed size quilts, so this is really a perfect size for a good, really generous lap size quilt. This room also serves as a guest room. So here is our brand new Murphy bed that we got. It's in its closed position now. Um, and it's a half Murphy bed, which I really like because it's just the right height to use as an ironing table. I made this ironing table, just uh, took some plywood and covered it with batting and aluminum foil and it makes a perfect ironing station. And of course, every ironing station needs its own quilt. I just finished this last night and love it so much. So I'm really happy to be able to share it with you today. And that's it, that's my sewing room. I love it so much. It's nice and bright. 
It has um, an extra window up above that opens up if I need some air in here. And it gives me plenty of space. It's cheerful. I love it so much and I'm really glad to have been able to show it to you this morning. I hope I can show it to you guys in person soon. Thanks, bye. Hello, this is Janelle Voorhees, your president, and I wanna welcome you into my sewing quilting room. Come on in. I have a little chest of drawers here. It has 20 drawers in it. I just love it because it's all those little things you never know what to do with. And I have little labels on them. One of my first quilts I made out of New York Beauty paper piecing. This is the basket of fabrics you guys gave me last year and I've added some more to it because I've used up a lot. And I have a desk where I can do my computer work, design work. And this is one of my design walls. Right now it has about a hundred or so pieces, English paper piecing. Um, it's in kind of no ex explanatory order right now, but um, it will all come together. I've got about 50 more little hexagon blocks stashed away. I love this little cart because it rolls around. Very handy, especially when I go on a retreat. This is where I keep a little basket. I keep all my fusibles, interfacing, and a good portion of my quilts are here on these little comic book boards. I just wrap them around. It works really well. I can see the colors I have. And I have some assorted fun things on the top shelf. This is where I do most of my cutting. I also have a really nice ironing mat. Thank you, Diana Watson and Dave Watson. And I can put that right on top of my cutting mat if I need a big ironing board. This is where I keep one of my sewing machines and to roll around. I can put it anywhere I want in this room. It works out really well. These are all projects yet to be done and more fabrics and a sewing machine cover and a lot more storage and my so easy table stores right here. Behind these three magic doors is a multitude of sims. I'll let you take a peek in here. This is an extra design wall that I take with me on retreats. It comes in real handy. I have a lot of extra batting in here. Here I've got scraps more scraps, pieces, more pieces, strip sets, etc. These are um, different accessories and lots of thread in here. And my printer. A roll around cart that is handy. My violin. I've got my templates hung up. Then I have another design wall and I just took a quilt off of it. So it's pretty empty right now, but thank you for joining me today. Bye. I hope you all got a good laugh out of that last picture. <laughs> so many of you have told me that you don't want your sewing room, you know, you don't want it cleaned up. I mean, you don't have time to clean it up. And I'm like, come on, if I can clean it from there to what it is today, <laughs> a few of you can do that. Do you guys like seeing studio tours? I'm seeing a few thumbs up, a lot of head shaking. I'd like to do at least two of them 
every business meeting, which is the first meeting of the month. So I want all of you to uh, <laughs> just laugh at yourself, have a good time with it, show the before picture, then show the after picture, and then we'll give you a lot of kudos for being brave. So thank you. I've got a little bit more here. Um, January 6th, we're going to be doing our Guild Challenge. And I'm going to read a message I received from Debbie Ferris Cole. She's in charge of the um, Quilted But Not a Quilt Challenge. We're delighted by the creative and beautiful projects already received. This is another wonderful opportunity to inspire the Guild members. Um, and we all need that this year in particular. We will put together a slideshow of all the projects and stories to be revealed in January. Please participate by emailing a picture of your project, and that would be something quilted but not a quilt. And a brief description of where you found the pattern and send it all to Debbie Ferris Cole. She's in the roster. An email was sent to you with all the information a couple of weeks ago and prizes will be awarded to four members for the most creative or the most useful item. I'm hoping all entries will be received by December 6th. That gives you three days to get on the ball. Thank you so much for your participation. I promise you will want to make some of the items that will be shared in January. Wonderful holidays to everyone. Love, Debbie. So, and she says all entries must be received by December 6th. Thank you in advance for participating in this challenge. And did I mention that there, she has a budget and there will be prizes issued? So keep that in mind. And thank you, Debbie, for creating this interesting challenge. Let's move on to Guild Dues. And if you can unmute, Jan Andrews, let's hear from Jan about how our dues collecting is going and who's the winning numbers. Hi, everybody. Um, we have had two drawings so far, and our lucky winners have been Patty Bassignani, Joy Lee, Michelle Marcotte, and Jeannie Parent. Um, I will do the final two drawings uh, probably tomorrow after I get the uh, mail from Jim and get it all totaled up. Um, I will start planning on making deliveries once I make those last two drawings. So we still have two prizes left and uh, Jim has already been to the P.O. box. So uh, you can... Uh, you could still pay your dues, but the prizes are all gone. And I urge you to do that before the end of the year. It's P.O. Box 9251, Santa Rosa 95409. It's $35. And you can just make your check out to SRQG. And I thank everyone who's already paid. Thank you, Jan. And it's also in the newsletter. And the address where you can mail it to. So if you forget, just check the newsletter. And did you know that you can make a donation to our guild without paying a penny? Linda Hooper has a wonderful video, video for you on how to do this. I'm Linda Hooper. With the current pandemic, I know that we are all shopping from home now more than ever. Last year at one of our guild meetings, we did a short presentation on how to use Amazon Smile. Every time you order something through Amazon Smile, a small amount of your purchase goes toward your favorite charity. In this case, the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild. It's very easy to get started. All you need is a current Amazon account. So what you would do is you would go to smile.amazon.com and then they will want your login information. So you log in with your Amazon password um, and usually an email address. So once you uh, 
log on, you're going to be, uh, it's going to lead you to a page that looks something like this. Um, it's going to say, get started. So that's where you're going to click on this little uh, get started um, button here. And that's going to take you to a page that is going to prompt you to uh, select your, uh, the charity that you want. And so the page is going to look something like this. Um, and, and right here, you're going to type in Santa Rosa Quilt Guild, and then you're going to hit this select button. That's going to take you to another page that will show you um, the correct uh, charity that you want to uh, have them donate toward. So this one here, it shows the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild, and that's the one that you want to select. So over here, off to the uh, right-hand side is a select button. So I've drawn an arrow there just to make it real easy when you go to the tutorial that I put up on our website. Um, so you're going to uh, click select, and then um, that's really all there is to it. It's going to take you to this very last page, and this last page just says, yes, I understand that I must log on to smile.amazon.com in order for the donation to go through. And that's the part that is a little bit tricky and maybe might take some getting used to. Um, so when you go to smile.amazon.com, it'll look just like your regular Amazon page and you order your products just like you would regularly. Uh, the only thing is that um, 0.05% of your purchase goes toward the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild. So it's very easy to do. I've also um, written down all these instructions and they will be on our TSW page. So if you'd like to do uh, a download so that you can have step-by-step -step instructions, it's very easy to do and it just benefits um, everyone. You get your purchases online and the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild gets a little kickback. So, well, happy holidays, everybody. It's nice to see everybody in red. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. And my husband and I have one account. So whenever I type in Smile Amazon, I make sure that it says Santa Rosa Quilt Guild because he's got another um, charity that he he assigns to his purchases. So if you've got, you know, two members in your family, you can always set up two separate selections, but always do smile.amazon.com and you can just go from there. It works really well. Okay, moving on to January 21st, I'm trying to cover the month of January here. Um, we're having a free rave sew day and introduction of a new mystery quilt led by Carol Belke. So it should be a really fun day. We'll all be in our own houses sewing, but there are ways to set up your um, cameras. So you can see everybody nicely. You can set up so it's facing your you and your sewing machine and you can be sewing and or working on knitting or whatever you wanna do, but it should be a really fun day. So just plan on January 21st being a fun day and we'll give you a tutorial before then on you know the best way to set up a camera so you could see everybody better than having it off to the side. Okay so don't leave yet I want to call on our vice president Jan Nielsen. She put together a wonderful memorial for all of us. It is with great sadness that we show you this video. And can you please show the video? Hello everyone, this is Jan Nielsen, the Vice President for the Guild, and um, I wanted to spend some time at the end of our meeting today to acknowledge and remember members that we have lost. Now in normal times, Sharon does a tribute to members that we've lost at our Founders Day luncheon. However, since we did not have a Founders Day this year, I will summarize from notes and pictures that Sharon, Betty Upchurch, and others have said about the members we lost as we pay tribute to some amazing people and quilters. The first one is Catherine Sanders. Many of the members will remember Catherine Sanders. 
She was a delightful person who loved to take workshops offered through the Guild. Her daughter, Diane LaFoe, is still a member of the Guild. Catherine passed away on Sunday, November 22nd, at the ripe old age of 101. Diane was able to visit and celebrate her 100th birthday with her. Many of us sent Catherine cards for that memorable day. Catherine remained active right up to her last days, helping others and the staff at the care facility where she moved a couple of years ago. She had moved to Michigan several years ago to be close with her son and her grandchildren. Catherine will be missed, but will always be remembered with fond memories. The next person is Mitzi Dowling. Mitzi was well loved by many people in the Guild, and she passed away early Friday morning on April 17th. She was a wonderful friend and mentor to many. She joined our guild in 1989 and Mitzi's applique quilts were exquisite and, <clears throat> and her miniature quilts were absolutely fabulous as you can see from the picture. And in this one, she won a purple ribbon. She was featured as the star quilter in Moonlight Quilt Show and in Eureka. Even though Mitzi's health did not allow her to join us at guild meetings these past few years, she still participated in ways that she could. She made fab a fabulous block for Sharon's Rose of Sharon quilt. And for those of us who shared the all too short path with Mitzi, we will always smile when we hear her name and see photos of her wonderful work. We will miss visiting with her and her fabulous laugh. And the next person is Peggy Sue Buckaloo. Peggy passed away on June 13th, just minutes before her birthday. She was a member of the Santa Rosa Quilt Guild, the Riding Club of Santa Rosa, and, re and she retired as a bus driver from the city of Santa Rosa. She had many friends and was loved by everyone. She joined our guild on no in November of 2016 with her dear friend, Leora Benelak. Uh, Leora considered herself her sister. They were actually biological sisters we don't know, but they could not have been closer. They were always together. Peggy was not able to renew her membership <clears throat> with our guild this past year due to her illness, but Leora kept her informed. She was like Peggy, Peggy Sue was lucky to have Leora and we were lucky to have Peggy Sue in our lives. This picture is with Peggy and Leora on the left. It was taken in March of this year. Peggy had melanoma cancer um, and she had a very um, short end of her life uh, in terms of her illness, so not a lot of suffering. She was actually Leora's driver. <laughs> And Leora said she could back up a car most than anyone could drive forward. She was a joy, she loved everyone, and she was known for her fabulous peanut brittle. Next person is uh, Karen Boscolo. Karen always had a smile for all of us, but she was on the quiet side, so probably many of us did not, did not know her. Uh, well and did not know how she positively affected so many. She had worked as an LVN nurse, an in-home child care provider, and a sales designer. She traveled often in the U.S. and around the world visiting family. The many family, friends, veterans, foster children are all the recipients of her quilting passion. Over 3,500 quilts were made and given away. She saved lives by donating at least 100 pints of blood. And she had taken a keen interest in genealogy and journaling. She will be missed by many. Edie Sorensen. Uh, Edie uh, joined our guild in 2003. And we were lucky to have her. Because along with other members of our hospitality crew, she was, she was active in the taking care of all of us and keeping us uh, well-fed. 
Uh, she, with, other, with the rest of the crew, received a merit award in 2014 for her work. She would quite often be in the Scottish Rites parking lot when Sharon arrived, well over an hour before the start of a me meeting because she was eager to get to work and get the coffee going. She had not been a member of our guild for a few years, but those who had the privilege to know her will recall her as one of the enthusiastic contributors. She was 82 when she passed. And lastly, uh, Esther Altman, which I, we do not have a picture of Esther, uh, but she was a very talented, upbeat lady for those who remember her. She joined our guild in 1998 uh, when she gave up driving and she found other ways to get to guild meetings, sometimes by bus. She loved browsing the silent auction tables and it was a very generous contributor as she loved supporting our library. It was always easy to remember her birthday, Valentine's Day, and she loved using hearts in her project. She had an extensive and very organized sewing room and a stash, which she was happy to share with those when the need arose. <clears throat> those are the ones that we know of who have left us this year, but we also have some members who have lost husbands, and our condolences go to Pam Beebe and Angie Kiker. And I'm sure there are others who may have lost family members as well. And we wish that all find peace and some joy in fond memories. And now as we adjust to the changes this year has brought and prepare to say goodbye to 2020, thank goodness, let's remember those we've lost and acknowledge for each of us that every day is a gift to be used to the best of our abilities and to share with those we love. Appreciate those who touch your life and our good fortune to be members of a wonderful group of quilters with many, many talents in the sewing room and in our community. We look forward to 2021 and the times when we could all meet together again. Have a wonderful holiday. Thank you, Jan and Sharon and all who helped put this memorial together. Um, it's the hardest part of the job. I have a couple of final comments. Um, please continue to stay safe. COVID is still out there, but a vaccine is on the well way. But take care until we can all be vaccinated and be safe. And don't forget to donate to the blood bank. Uh, and the food bank, um, but the food bank was putting out some um, advertising this week saying that they got through Thanksgiving with the generous donations from the community, but they need to build it up again for the December holidays coming up. This meeting has been brought to you by Zoomster Ann Nolan and her team, Elaine Tucker and Justine Lott, and our webmaster, Linda Superhooper. And I would thank all of you for making this possible. And our sponsor today at, at my house has been Seas Candy. Lots of wonderful nuts. Don't forget these. Inamins makes them now. And any other junk food you can um, possibly think of. I've been eating a lot of it this week. So with that said, thank you everyone. Have wonderful holidays and meeting adjourned. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you're welcome to stay and, and visit with other guild members for about 15, 20 minutes, maybe longer, maybe less. But thank you all. Appreciate it. <laughs>